All right, our next example problem is actually uh, a problem taken from Wikipedia. Um, on their differential equations page, they have some links to uh, physical systems to described by ODEs. Um, and so according to Wikipedia, the Renz attractor introduced by Edward Lorenz in 1963 is a nonlinear three-dimensional deterministic dynamical system derived from the simplified equations of convection rules arising in the dynam dynamic equations of the atmosphere. And for a certain set of parameters, the system exhibits chaotic behavior and displays what is today called a strange attractor. All right, cool. Okay, so here's our system of differential equations. Uh, so you have a system of first order ODEs. Uh, so we, here's our rate of x, y, and z. We're given parameters for sig or values of our parameters sigma, b, and r. Uh, then later on, I think it's in part um, uh, c, it gives some um, suggested initial conditions. Okay, um, so let's uh, get set up in MATLAB and let's solve um, uh, our system of different Qs uh, corresponding to uh, the Lorenz attractor and see what we get. Okay, and we'll also play around with uh, making our function more general and showing how we can pass these uh, via an anonymous function. Okay, so here we are over in MATLAB. Uh, where I've tried to keep the problem open so I can see the uh, system of equations uh, down here. So to solve it numerically using uh, MATLAB, uh, using ODE45, the first thing I'll need to create is a rate function. Okay, And we'll start by creating a specific rate function in which we hard code the parameters. Then after we solve, we'll see how we could use an anonymous function. Okay, um, So function signature function, ODE45 expects a rate function with a single output and two input variables. So res will be equal to, and I'll call this the rens, okay? And two inputs, I'll call it uh, t and v. It seems that I use v a lot. I don't know where I picked up the habit, but uh, that's it. <laughs> All right, so rate function with a single output and two inputs. So as always, the first thing I will do is unpack um, v. Um, so order of our functions is up to you. Once you pin down that order, though, you need to be consistent throughout. Okay, so I'm going to call my first element x, then y, then z. Okay. So I'll assign to x the first element of v. I'll assign to y the second element of v. And I'll assign to z the third element. Okay. Then next, Okay, in this version, I'll have uh, we'll hard code our parameters. So I have sigma is equal to 10, uh, b is equal to 8 thirds, and r is equal to 28. Okay. So then next, we'll compute our rates. So dx dt is equal to sigma times y minus x dy dt is equal to x times r minus z minus y dz dt is equal to x times y minus b times z okay and so uh, by unpacking up here it allows me to write our rate expressions in uh, terms uh, just like we would write them out mathematically uh, which is nice, uh, in addition to helping me keep uh, the order of my uh, arguments consistent, or order of my functions consistent when I pack and unpack um, all our vectors. So the last step is to pack up uh, rate. So uh, ODE45 expects that we're returning a single variable back, uh, so res uh, will contain our rates. When I pack it up, we said that our first um, function was x, then y, then z. So when I pack up my rates, s v x, y, and z. So rate of change of x, followed by rate of change of y, followed by rate of change of z. Okay, And then the uh, very important subtle note is when I pack them up, I need to return my rates as a column vector. So these are semicolons uh, separating uh, my elements. Okay, So I'm going to save that. So now to solve, okay, I'm just going to scroll down to where we had our initial conditions here. Okay. All right. 
So then how we would solve is if we want to solve and assign our um, results to uh, output variables. Okay, um, I'll make an assignment to t and m. So t will be a column vector containing all the times at which our function was evaluated. m will be a matrix where our first column will be um, x, second column will be y, third column will be z. Then all the rows will correspond to uh, corresponding elements or corresponding time uh, as in that time vector. Okay, so MATLAB essentially sets the output up um, like you might picture a table uh, in Excel. Right? You have a header for x, y, and z, and then time. So UD45, name my rate function, which in this case is Lorenz. Okay, time range. So we're told to try 0 to 30. And then our initial conditions. Our initial conditions um, will be in the form of a vector. Okay, looks like my head's blocking it here. Okay, be the form of a vector. We need initial condition for x, y, and z. Okay, and the order is going to be x, y, and z. That order needs to agree with the rate or order in which we unpacked v and then packed up our rate function. So this will be 1, uh, 2, and 3. Um, I spelled the runs wrong. Okay, so t is a column vector. We have 1,641 times in there. Uh, so, you know, the problem statement it said it was a chaotic problem. And when I have a lot of data points like this, it just suggests that it was a difficult problem to integrate. So, MATLAB had to use, you know, a small time step to, to carry it out. Okay, and then m. Uh, has you know the same number of rows, 1,641, and uh, three columns. Okay, so I won't dare try and and, and uh, you know display all of M or T because it's just way too much. Okay, uh, but again, I like to often split this up. So let me create uh, X will be all rows first column of M. Y is all rows second column z is all rows third column okay um, if I want to plot it I can plot t versus x and maybe that's a well, actually let me do a I'm gonna do a hold on the hold on could come after but you know before I forget because I want to uh, demonstrate the use of an anonymous function as well so let's go ahead and we're going to plot uh, t comma x. That could be a black line. t comma y. That could be a red line. t comma z. And that could be uh, about a blue line. Okay, plot them all. Uh, there they are. Cool. Okay. If I want to add a label, uh, sure, I could do that. So Y label would be, I guess, X, Y, or Z. X label would be time. Okay, cool. All right, so what I want to do next is show, um, demonstrate the use of an anonymous function to pass those parameters. And then we'll plot that solution on here to confirm that they're identical. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be very creative and save this as save a copy of say Lorenz general. Okay, so I'm going to update my signature. Okay, and what I'm going to do in Lorenz general is rather than defining these parameters, I want to allow the user uh, to pass them as input variables. And rather than just outright delete these, I'm going to suppress them, or I'm going to you know, turn them into comments, which has the same effect as deleting. Uh, but if I want to go in and restore uh, those values, I could go and do so. All right. So now the challenge with using this rate function is I have a total of five input variables. ODE45 only expects two. Okay. So how I can pass those additional variables to the rate function is via an anonymous function. So let me you know, create, say, Lorenz2. Okay. So this could be an anonymous function. This could be of a type of anonymous. 
I want my anonymous function to have two input variables, call them t and v. And then what I'd like to do is call the rens general with the value t and v passed to the anonymous function along with the current values assigned to sigma, b, and r. Okay, which before I create the anonymous function, I better make sure I define those. So sigma is uh, 10, uh, b is 8 thirds, and r is 28. Okay, all right. So uh, I'm gonna create Lorenz, Lorenz two. So it's gonna be anonymous function, so type anonymous. We want two inputs, we'll call them t and v, two inputs for use with um, Udi E45. I'm going to call the rents two with those two input variables. What I'd like to do is call the rents general with the values of t and v that we passed to the anonymous function, along with sigma, b, and r, which are currently defined um, in my um, workspace. Okay, I'll suppress the output. Bam. So now let's call this t2 and m2. Okay, so I don't overwrite my other variables. So now we can solve our ODE, so ODE45. So first argument was function handle for our rate function. So here it's gonna be Lorenz2, okay? And our anonymous function is already of type function handle, so I don't need the at sign, all right? So it's just Lorenz2. Uh, time range was our same zero to 30. Initial conditions one, two, Let me split up just like it did before. So x2 is all rows first column. Y2 is all rows second column. Z2 is all rows third column. Okay. Let me bring up the plot. So now let's plot T2 versus x2, t2 versus y2, t2 versus c2. Instead of lines, let's plot circles. Bam, all right? Uh, essentially, they're right on top of each other. It's just the circles are a little bigger, all right? Perfect, okay? And, you know, well, you know, maybe I should have displayed both as symbols, but I'm not sure if you, you know, really would have been able to tell. But if I look at my workspace over here, I find that you know our original solution and you know using this anonymous function, our variables are all of exactly uh, the same size. Okay, so um, cool. Uh, then the other thing that it asks you to do and, and it does is the phase plot. For this case, it's going to be a three-dimensional plot. Okay, so if I hold up, open up Figure Two. Okay, so if I want to plot in yeah 3D. MailUp actually has the ability to do this. Okay, it's, the function is plot three, uh, and so if I plot, you know, x, y, and z, and I could still, you know, indicate I want say a black line. Okay, and plot it, and I get a three-dimensional surface. Okay, cool. Okay, there's actually a comment three as well uh, that you could do to dynamically draw it, but uh, yeah, that's that. Okay, and with that. Now, let's move on.